Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi there. How are you, sir? Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So that just happened. Thursday, March 30th, 2019. What is it? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We remain standing for an opening prayer by uh, Envoy Kevin Napkins from the Salvation Army. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus this morning, Lord. And as we come to you, we just ask that, that you put um, a hedge of wisdom around our leaders today, Lord. We, we, we want to pray for our leaders and that they will be filled, filled with your wisdom and your knowledge as they discuss the important things that go on here in our county, Lord, as they, as they make plans for the future. We just ask that you fill them with your plan and that everything will run smoothly. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. All right. Now I got Oh, yeah, I got Oh, Carolyn? Yes. I forgot to tell you, Don, Susan's husband, he's in the hospital, so. Okay. All right. Bye. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. So um, we don't have Pete Daniels here today, our administrator, who's the brains of the operation. So did you want to say anything while you were here? Did I want to say something? Yeah. Sure. Um, I would like to just bring, oh, for those that don't know me, I'm Dennis Schreiner, and I live in uh, Groton Township. Uh, just wanted to bring you up to date on kind of the culmination of events of yesterday where House Bill 6 was approved. As you know, that House bill uh, changed dramatically from the point of introduction to its approval yesterday by the House and its movement to the Senate. Uh, I'll just kind of give a quick recap of my opinion about where it's at. All the energy mandates were removed from the bill and they are scheduled to phase out over the next six years. Uh, the energy efficiency mandates were also removed from the bill. All Ohioans should see a reduction of about $2.50 a month on their bill right now, and in six years, they, their bill will be $10 a month less. So it's kind of a savings thing for uh, the consumers. One of the things that a lot of detractors didn't like about the bill, that it does provide $150 million a year in a fund that the davis Bessey nuclear plants and the Perry nuclear plants could draw on. And that could be up to $9 a megawatt hour. One of the things is they did is they put a uh, auditing function in the bill such that if energy prices go up, then the subsidies, that $9 a megawatt, would be reduced to the plant so that, you know, it isn't a for perpetuity, you're going to be paying $9 a megawatt hour as a uh, an incentive to keep the plant open. So I, I think that that was a good compromise. But the most important thing, and the thing I wanted to talk to you about, is I provided some testimony on May 23rd because they amended the bill and called it a sub, uh, pardon me, a substitute bill, where they added a provision such that when a energy project comes into the area, there can be a local referendum uh, on the, the folks that live in the townships and the unincorporated areas to either approve or disapprove through a referendum uh, the siting of those projects. I think that was a great day for the people of Ohio, the local residents here, because uh, not so much in Erie County, because I know I've worked with you guys, and people feel that you're pretty much in tune, that we can come and talk to you, we can do whatever. You go to some of the other counties, and I don't think I need to enumerate them, and those folks that are in key positions are either leaseholders or they're good neighbors or their family members are, and we really don't have a voice from some of those areas, particularly down in Seneca County, if we want to move out of the Emerson Creek project to go down, there is no voice. The pro-wind people will say, well, the county commissioners approve or disapprove a project based on whether it's pilot or no pilot. And they actually said in front of God and everybody that if a pilot isn't approved, all the wind projects are canceled. 
Well, as you well know, Emerson Creek is moving forward and, and we did not vote, you did not vote in favor of a, a pilot program. So a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, I think when it moves to the Senate, you're gonna see some changes to that, that language in the, the local rule or home rule part of the bill. I think also you're gonna see a little change in the language. Uh, a lot of people are still uh, out of sorts over $150 million going to a singular company that runs two nuclear power plants. Just wanted to give you an update. It was an awesome day because the anti-wind people, the unions, the utility people, and then uh, I forget what the, the, coal, uh, the coal entity was. We all came together and uh, got the legislators all behind us to approve House Bill 6. So it's good to come. Well, Do you have any for, questions? No, thanks for uh, everything you've done personally to educate us. Well, Thank I appreciate you. having the opportunity to take you. Uh, I know, Steve, I didn't get to take you through Davis Bessie. Uh, maybe at some time we could do that but i retire tomorrow so <laughs> but I, I think they would probably let me come back if you wanted to have a tour and uh it was my pleasure to bring you out to the plant a couple of times went through Davis. and I went through with yeah, he went Davis. through on the commissioner yeah. tour yeah. uh no, that, that no no no, no. Yeah, that, he does the yep. a tour <laughs> um, yeah i did the well uh, not that you weren't a vip i don't do the group tours i just do the but selective it was, tours. it was very educational and I think the thing that stuck in my uh, brain was uh, two things, actually. The, the amount of safety that is involved in security in that plant was just astounding. And then secondly, when you show that, in fact, I have the, the app on my phone. Oh, the PA, PJM interconnection? Yeah, that shows the real status of the, of the grid and um, who's supplying what. Yeah, who's right. supplying what right. and at what particular time of the day you can pull up and what the energy cost is and what it's selling for. I found that fascinating. Of course, the day forward price is there too, so you yep. can see, and yep. then load, projected load demand also. Yeah. But when you look at the one-third, 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 let's call it, for nuclear, coal, and gas, and right the renewable energies are such a small slice of that, and 30 70 percent of the time and if you eliminate any one of those coal or you eliminate nuclear you're left with right. one supplier right and as a commodity project when you look at how those prices fluctuate between the different areas of the country yes i mean that could be disastrous for energy prices well uh i think you know representative sites uh, is not only pro-nuclear, but he's very, very pro-gas. And I think it's important if you go out to, uh, what's the, I gave you a, a link to the thing, it's called the Ohio Channel, and look at the legislative session yesterday. Go to part two and go toward the end where Representative Seitz wraps it up. He said, you know, I am very, very much gas, 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 gas. But he said, I gotta tell you, if we eliminate coal and we eliminate nuclear, gas is going to be the only show in town and he said even though i'm so pro gas it is never good to have your eggs all in one basket yep. so uh, he provides that testimony <clears throat> thank you thank you for coming and we appreciate your work yeah thanks dennis enjoy retirement i will <laughs> you know i'm available to work on some projects that may not <laughs> we'll keep you in mind absolutely any other public comment? Fast audience. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to do, I think you have some minutes, don't you? Yep, we have some resolutions. Uh, some resolutions. Motion to approve the minutes to the May 16th commission meeting. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Motion to award the bid for the Huron Basin Water Pollution Control Facility Selection Water Improvement. Corporation of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Uh, move to approve resolution board of commissioners for the purpose of entering into an agreement with Groton Township. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Move for adoption of resolution of the board of commissioners authorizing the county auditor to make a supplemental appropriation. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. 
Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of declaring necessity to levy a renewal of an existing tax at the same rate in excess of the 10 mil limit for the purpose of providing the current operating expenses of the Erie County Combined General Health District, carry out its health programs and requesting the Erie County Auditor certify the amount of tax generated by the proposed tax levy in the amount of three tenths of a mil renewal levy for Ohio Revised Code. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into a 2020-2021 biennial sub-grant agreement with the Ohio Department of Child and Family Services. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. That's it. Gary, did you have anything? Yeah, I want to talk briefly about the parking garage. I think as uh, most people know, especially us, that we were, uh, are in negotiations with the city of Sandusky, looking at perhaps leasing them 15 parking spaces for use for city vehicles. And that's, that's still ongoing uh, negotiation that I'm working on. But part of what came up as I was doing some work on that is there are some provisions in the revised code, chapter uh, 717, specifically about um, multi-level off-street parking structures that are owned by the county if inside of a city that is defined as an impacted city, which has to do, uh, it's kind of an economic uh, status. We're still looking at it. The city is not presently, I believe, impacted, but it's going to become impacted and has been impacted. That's a specific definition. Was in the past, and these provisions apply if it were, at the time we built the garage, basically, if they were impacted at that time. I don't have that information yet. That would have been sometime in the late 90s. But you assume they are. Well, they, they certainly may have been. And if that is the case, then we would have had a, could have had a 20 year tax exemption from paying property taxes on the parking garage building. Um, but that may have expired. And so there is a possibility that the county would have to pay property taxes on the value of the parking garage as determined by the auditor. So that's just something that may be coming up um, that we haven't probably budgeted for and so forth, but there we may find out, and we're looking into that more right now, um, at paying those county taxes uh, that normally would apply to, to real estate in the county. So. <coughs> so, I'm not exactly sure what that means. So, well, the schools would benefit from us paying real estate tax, but we wouldn't have the money to pay it, right? Well, if it's a, if it's an effect, we'd have to pay it. Um, it would certainly be benefit for the local school districts because most of the county's real estate taxes. The county only gets a very small percentage of that, I forget, seven or eight percent maybe. And uh, the, the vast majority of the taxes, over 80%, go to the school district. So we'd actually be benefiting the local schools if we did that. That'd be one way to look at it. Okay, so what, couldn't you, I know I park in, I think, doesn't the county own a parking garage in Cleveland? Uh, it the, well, there's more than one. I think the one by the county courthouse, they might, but the, and the city on some other ones. I'm not sure exactly which is which. Well, I, I'd just be curious, you know, do, are they in the same situation uh, as we are? You know, it's kind of funny that I've never been in a parking garage that I can remember is other than Crocker Park where they're selling me expensive stuff, free parking. I think there are definitely government owned uh, parking garages and structures that normally charge. I think that's pretty common in any of the bigger cities. Have to, I mean. Yeah. 
Um, I was just in Akron to court uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the parking garage that's uh, affiliated with the Summit County Courthouse definitely charges because I just paid them. And no free parking. I mean, we're getting to the point, we're going to, like Steve, you were saying, we're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars of maintenance are coming up on a 20, if it's 20 plus years. I mean, we got to come, and now we have to pay real estate tax? I mean, maybe, maybe. maybe we're going to have to think about, you know, changing how we look at that. Are there any restrictions on how we operate that garage? Well, the, the, the revised code sections that I was just looking at, um, again, it's going back to assuming it was an impacted city at the time of the initial application that was made for the tax exemption, which then uh, goes on for 20 years. If that, under that provision, it, public parking is declared a public purpose, but it says it's a public purpose as long as it's available to the general public on a daily, monthly, or other subscription basis. What subscription mean, charge? Well, I don't know what else it could mean. That I'm, that I haven't found any case law on this or administrative rules on it at this point, so we're still looking into that a little deeper to see if we can clarify that, but I don't know what subscription basis would mean other than paying. I don't know what else that could be. Uh, uh, that's the plain meaning of a subscription. So it would seem like uh, there could be a charge or rental you know, fees for, for parking. Uh, and that wouldn't have even changed it. That wouldn't have taken it outside its public purpose of being available to the general public. So um, again, uh, don't have all the details yet on how all that will affect us. But we're still working on that. And also working on uh, seeing if we can negotiate a lease with the city of Sandusky. Maybe I'll hold up on that till we figure out what we're going to do. Maybe till we know more. Yeah. They didn't accept the last, last proposal? Um, no, not directly. They're, I think they're looking at countering. Uh, maybe offering some other you know, other benefits other than paying rent. We have had one public record request for a copy of the lease that the city provided to us. Their, you know, the initial document that that they prepared. Uh, I don't believe anyone's asked for ours for what we countered with at this point. But obviously, that would be available. So you, yeah. but you told us last week that. You roughly counted, we, you need 60 spaces for our employees? It's a, it's a guesstimate. There's more, there's certainly been more people parking inside now um, than there is, than there were before since the city started enforcing two hour parking in the majority of downtown. A lot of people used to just park outside. And so those people have come in, but I think it's probably fair to say there's pretty close to one car per person of the employees in the in the uh, office building. And there's, there's 60 employees that work there, roughly? I think Maybe. that's probably in the ballpark, yeah. I mean, prosecutors alone is 20, right? Yeah. So Not everybody's always there, but still, could be, could, could all be there. And they, uh, of course, today it's closed. They provided special parking for us on Columbus Ave for the people that work in the office building. Don't you guys do grand jury down there once a month? Yeah, in fact, I think there, yes. And how many bodies come for grand jury? Including alternates, I think it's 20 something people. And then and that doesn't count witnesses, police, investigators, uh, people that are involved otherwise. So that could be four. Could be, yeah. I mean, they're not all there all day necessarily. But you still have to have a space for them to park. They have to park somewhere. Right. Yeah, we have sometimes highway patrolmen coming in, but you know, it's often city police or county sheriffs or Perkins police and so forth. But Total number of spots is about 200, is that? That's the what they were told, yeah. In the garage, yeah, I think so. About 200. So you might as well say we need 100 guaranteed for us to do business there. Right now, the lowest level says it's reserved for employees only. But nobody parks there. 
Well, more people are, I have to say, typically there weren't a lot of people parked down there. More people are not parking down there since the city uh, restrictions on parking. So there are more people down there, but are you are you saying that cars are parked typically. overnight? I mean, there, are, a there are there are a few during the week. Yeah, there are a few. You know, I'm not typically there obviously all night, but there's I know there's Tonight. at least a couple people. Yeah. I do take off at night sometimes. There are some uh, I know for sure of at least one residential apparently person who parks in one of the handicapped spots every day. And I think his car is there, except when he, you know, takes it to go somewhere, and then he comes right back and parks in the same handicapped spot. Um, so there's some of that going on. I don't think there's a lot of it. In the evenings, there's always maybe a couple dozen cars. Sure. On a typical evening, even in the winter and on weeknights, more on the weekends. Well, you got an old building that's going to need some money put into it, so you better figure out what you're going to. We sure don't have it in the general fund. Reserving yeah. spaces for county employees, things like that, that doesn't impact the usage of what we're allowed to do. I know that gate used to be in the lower level where it was some type of a pass gate. Yeah, my understanding of the gate was it came down on somebody's car at some point. So I think the decision was just made not to use the, the gate that blocks that area off. Um, well, that wouldn't give you enough spaces for what we need anyway. Down there would be, I would say behind that gate, there's about 16 in the one row. There's probably 50 some space, 50 to 60 spaces, 50 some spaces would be my best guess on behind the employee gate. Sounds like you'd have to put a gate at the beginning to figure it out and then what they do in Cleveland is they have reserve, 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 reserve. One of the other things that I guess to take into consideration with that, I'm not sure you could leave that 100% unmanned. And obviously they have uh, automated equipment that where you pull a ticket and then you can pay yeah. the automated ticket. But I think typically at the ones in the bigger cities, if you ever got jammed in there somehow or something didn't work, I do think they have some attendant on duty. Well, we could have somebody come from the office building. True. Yeah. yeah. One of the janitors. Yeah. There's plenty of yeah. county people around. Office after four. That's true. <coughs> Maybe somebody we'll continue to look into building. all those aspects. Yeah, I, I, I think I just hold up on that lease for now. We can figure out. How soon will we know? Do you think? Back at all those 25 years ago, whenever it was. Um, I don't think we probably have that information, but I, I can request it from the city. Um, we're talking, yeah, I believe probably around 96 would have been that time. And it would also, conceivably, it talks about the initial application for the tax exemption. Um, I haven't seen any of those documents if they exist uh, so we'd want to look at that just to make sure we actually fit into that if it turns out the city were not impacted back then then none of these apply to us um, and it is probably more going to be considered simply county property that has a different exemption this is particularly that these statutes are directed at multi-level parking facilities specifically so they only impact, uh, you know, the counties and cities that actually have a multi-level parking garage that they own. The smaller rural counties, there probably isn't such a thing. But moving forward, however we decide to manage it, that's there's no impact on how we manage it as far as do we charge, do we not charge, do we charge for some, do we not charge for others, do we charge? Set aside spacing for well, I'm trying to determine. Uh, I, I need to figure out what subscription basis means because if that, if, if it's available to the general public on daily, monthly, or other subscription basis, it can still have the public purpose. Um, and I take subscription basis. I don't know what else it could mean other than charging. So I think that's a, 
I think it's okay to charge in that situation. But if we're not under these statutes, then we'll have to look at closely at the other ones that would tax. There's, there is a, you can't be a, kind of a profit making thing for the government and not pay taxes. So there may be some fine line there. But if we are paying taxes anyway on, on the uh, property taxes, then it can't be any worse because we're charging. I mean, property taxes aren't based on income or anything. They're just strictly based on the value of that property. So if we were paying those taxes and, and we're able to charge, uh, there wouldn't be any negative impact on the property tax. In fact, it would just help subsidize property tax, I suppose. Yeah, right. Well, that's why you'd have to charge. Is yeah. We're going to have more money for the property. Right. Plus, if the, maybe the garage is used, is going to continue to be used more with the city restriction on the parking in the streets and uh, more use, more maintenance, more wear and tear. Sure. Well, I don't think it's a good idea to do the overnight parking. I, don't, I, I never thought that was a good idea. <laughs> I don't know if there's any restriction on uh, on that aspect of it, if it has to be available somehow. Uh, we'll look into all those details. Yeah. You, you, you get, they had the same problem down at Jackson Street Pier than people, if you're staying for a week somewhere, you just park down there, cars, <coughs> they had a restriction that you had to move the car. Right, they didn't have no parking between 2 a.m., I think it was between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., right. unless you were in the metered spots where you had to pay. Right, to we're gonna have to do something like that. I mean, that's the only way to really enforce this. And then, because the, in the end, if you have people that are living down there and they each have two cars, that would fill the parking garage. Just wouldn't have any spots left. There could be one other option. Uh, if, if it looked like we could go ahead and charge, and I've seen this in some parking garages, they actually have meters in there. Yeah. And that's how they charge. Instead of having the, the yeah. gates and the tickets, park at, a, at meters, which are now electronic and can be read from a distance. Auditors now always got, could take care of that for us. Yeah, they now can go just scan those as they go by. They, it's not like somebody, you don't have to have them hire the meter made again like downtown used to have. Yeah. yeah, I guess I parked in a lot where you had to, there was no gate, you were sort of on the honor system, but you had to put the thing in your window Right, and there's some you just put, you put one in an envelope, put it in a slot in some yeah. places and mm -hmm. check those, but you could actually also meter it with it. There would be an actual meter where you'd pay for X hours. Or yeah, that's how this would do it. You had to guess how many hours you were going to be there. Yeah. Buy that many hours. Yeah, well, I mean. There's high-tech parking meters now, too. Yeah. You pay with credit cards and everything. I guess we need to just be thinking proactively because we don't want to happen is everybody assumes that's the parking for their apartments. And then we come in one day and go, oh, sorry, everybody, everything you've based your life on has changed now. We're throwing everyone out. You know, I'd rather be proactive than reactive in this when we don't place for our employees to park, we don't place for the public to park to come and conduct business. So appreciate you thinking about this and working on it. I'll keep you updated. All right, any other business? I have a motion we adjourn. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Schachter? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes.